Okay, so something I want to show you real quick is the interaction between Vu and World Machine if you want to jump in between the two applications. So I just opened up Vu again. This is that standard simple scene that you can load from the beginning. I'm going to delete these other terrains. So I'm just selecting all the terrains and deleting. Select the one terrain I care about, which is this guy. And then if you go up to display, you can do frame all selected objects or frame selected objects all view. So if you do frame selected object, this panel is selected so it'll frame it into the piece. Now you can just middle mouse drag it so that it's much closer in frame and then you, know, you can do the same thing here. You can work independently frame in the selected view and then they pop up. Now there's a preference in here that has the orthos all framing at one time. Uh, it's called independent zooming, uh, so you can turn that on and off. And I believe the preferences are under file options, I believe. And then you have all your preferences. So just kind of look here, but there's somewhere in here. I mean, it's display center view. Anyway, you get the idea. I don't want to lose time here. Okay, it's actually this. You want to turn it on. It's not a click off. Independent zooming and panning of views. If you click this on, this panel will just update, then this panel won't. So you can individually select each. So, but I typically take that off. Um, okay, so we have our terrain. You can see it here. We can move it up higher. We can pan up, zoom in a little bit. This will update. So you get a good sense of what this uh, mountain looks like before. Render to screen. We've got final. Let's go a little larger. Render. It's pretty quick. And OK. Um, turn that off. So you can see, you can see it looks a little tighter in here and here it looks a little softer. So this is the terrain that we're rendering, right? So now we can change this terrain or we can export this terrain out to World Machine. So if you double click it, it'll open up what's called the terrain editor. Now you can also right click on it and do edit object, I believe. Yeah, edit object same parameter comes up. So basically what you can do is manipulate it in this form. Okay, so there's a couple things you can see in this terrain editor. There's actually a lot of things you can do here, but we'll just focus on two things. One is basically you can export out the map. So if you go up to the top left, there's an export button. And basically, you can export it as any kind of file generate. You can export it with the maps that are assigned to it. Um, you slide your resolution to what level that you want it to be on the top and bottom. So we're going to browse. We're going to save it to our desktop. And then here, I've already done one and just name it Terrain to Vu. Make sure it's a TIFF or a Targa format. And then basically it's going to save it out. And then basically you click OK. I would max out the slider so it matches what resolution you've got. Now you can see what resolution your texture, I say texture, but it's, it's basically it's a displacement map over uh, a plane. That's how VU is actually interpolating a lot of the geo inside itself. So if you click OK, it'll export it out. But you can decrease or increase by increments of 512 in here. And just know that it makes your scene file larger as you keep going larger and smaller. So you can go 4K, 2K. I would keep it anywhere between 2K and 1K depending on uh, your computer. So I'm going to just X out of this. And then we'll go back here just so we can see it. It goes out for a second. So what we want to do now is we'll go into World Machine. So this is the standard World Machine when you load. It basically is the new project. 
we're going to go to the generators so generator the little diskette which is a file input double click on it and then basically you want to load in that image so wherever you saved it and here you can see it's a displacement map click OK and then basically there's a lot of different parameters in here that you can change you can change the scaling but right now let's just keep it by default so we're going to click OK and if we do views additional window we'll get our window and just make sure you have it in the 3D view and then here you can see that map display. Now you can use the arrow keys in World Machine to move up and down on your object to help you pivot and then you can right click zoom, left click orbit, middle mouse zoom if you want and then again the arrow keys just make it nicer that you get a little bit more change. So we've imported our VU file. It's yellow right now. And let's just do a simple erosion on it. So we're going to drag the inputs to the input of the primary input to the erosion. And let's just do the standard. Uh, everything's just standard right now. So we'll render. Okay, it's done. And then if you look, it's done a nice little erosion on this object, right? So we had this, now we have that. It's not all that much. Now if you go into our extents, I'm making sure that I'm at 1024 with the 1024 that we exported out from our geo so that we have a one-to-one. -one. And let me make sure, I'm pretty sure that's what I had selected, but you want to make sure that if this geo is 1024 then the geo in here the map matches so we're at that same one to one now you could go larger and then down sample it afterwards if you want so let's see let me do geological now you'll get I moved it off the way click OK if I move this a little higher And if you see, since I'm selected on this, you get a little bit of a display sometimes. I was seeing it a second ago. And either this dialogue or this dialogue. So you get a little bit of a sense, but let's erode more. The erosion base. Let me make the rock hardness higher. And then the sediment. Click OK. There you, there you see that little update. It hasn't rendered yet, but you get a little bit of a, a sense of it. And since we're doing a little bit more of an operation to it, it's going to take a little longer. It's done. There you go. So now you've got a nice change to your software, to your elements. So it was this, now you've got that, and then now it's as simple basically as doing an output node. So you want to output back height field, hook that up, you want to render it, so now it's clean, and then basically you want to set where you want it to go. So we want to do a 16-bit TIFF set it. We're going to go back to where I save the other. So Terrain Vu. This one's going to be Terrain World Machine. Save. And as long as it's green, you know you've already rendered it. So you just write output. It's already done it. And then now you just click OK. And you can save your World Machine file so that you know you can go back and forth between the two. So I know I'm back in the the folder where I want to be, VU World Machine. Alright, and then now you just go back to VU, double click on your terrain, and then basically you want to load in the new terrain. 
So what you want to do is down here there's a little silhouetted person. You want to bring in a picture file. So you click this little box down here that's going to load in. You go to the top right folder and then you navigate to where you saved your files. Then you want to select the world machine file. So click open. And then now you've got this to this. And then basically preview. And there you go. Click OK. And then now you've got the world machine version of your file. Click OK. Go back in here. Now you do a render. Click OK. Click OK. And now you've got that to that. Now sometimes the height might vary a little bit. You see it's scaled it up a little bit. You can just kind of push it down in the Y axis. But if you're not trying to maintain a one-to-one, -one, at least this is, a, this is a nice way to get better quality on your pieces and then go back into it. Now you can do the same thing, that same idea if you just generate something from scratch in World Machine like something like this, render all this. So now you've got that object, right? It's not all that pretty, but you know, here, let's, uh, let's add to it. Duplicated the erosion, it's hooked up. Re-render from that spot. Okay, now it's done. Click OK. That same idea. You want to make sure it's a TIFF 16-bit or you can do a Targa, whichever your preference. I'll just do output name. That makes it easy. So that's rendered out. Click OK. I'll file save. Now that I've done this a little bit. Go back to VU. Close this out double click the terrain, do the same thing. You basically swap out. Come on. There we go. And then here's that new output. Now you can slide it. You can see a little bit with this slider, but by default it comes in at 50, but what's happening is it's blending between the two, and that's probably why I goofed when I loaded the image, because it was like almost doing a doubling. But if you slide it over and do a 100% picture, let's see what happens. There we go. And now, so it's, it's raised the base because of, uh, partially for what World Machine, oh, I don't want to do that, I just want to move the whole terrain down just so that you can see it a little bit now that's another thing it's very easy to copy and move things in VU it's a little uh, it's not a f to me it's not a fun uh, viewing apparatus. Uh, I actually like doing more of my setup in Maya just because it's a little bit more intuitive. Click OK. Click OK. But see you can see here it's got that nice terrain to it. But let me let me do a quick thing and just double check our old one. Okay I just went back. So this is the VU terrain where we had it. So this is just the VU terrain itself. Now if you go in the top left that flattens it out so it's back to being a plane. And now if you go to import picture and we go back to the world machine terrain, so this is the world machine terrain. Now you can see that and now if I do a preview you can see it's in the relative same height field. So that was my bad. You want to definitely make sure you zero out the plane so that it's only reading the file data itself. But it's kind of cool, just going between the two programs nicely. Um, you know, it's up to you for what programs you like to use again. Now, just something to go quick.
here's another scene file. You don't need to start in Vu. You can start in World Machine. I've got this simple little chain of things that we've seen, just regular, you know, generators, terrorist combiner, and erosion, and then I outputted a height field. So we got a height field that did this. Um, you know, it's basically this is the object. And then you can also output just a mesh, and the mesh looks like this, you know. So let me scale this down. So mesh, height field, you know. So with that, you can go between two other programs, which is basically you could take this into VU, like what we just did. Let's go into VU, and here it is. So like basically, all I did was take that same terrain and then flatten it, import, and then look at this nice mesh that you get. Now if I close this, I did a new atmosphere. Here's a little preview. And then basically, you know, maneuver around in here, move your camera, and then just do a relatively good size render. And then you get something like this. Now it just has a simple crappy texture on it. It's got the Vu puffy cloud straight out of the box. But this took me all of like five minutes. And if you like this layout and you move your camera around, you like your lighting. You can amplify this with photography, photography for the clouds, do a little bit of paint work, and it just speeds up your, your working methods because, like I said, I consider VU an underpainting generator, and that's kind of a term from painting, whereas you just get a good base of lighting, color uh, to start, and this is actually a little bit better than that, so it really gives you a roadmap for what to hone in for if you find working from scratch you know, from multiple different images of photos, it's harder to do to balance it. This gives you kind of a basis. You could call this your concept.